Hello and welcome back to Let's Code Physics. We are continuing to look at projectile motion with our projectile motion simulator. Um, last time we added this feature where we are um, adding in a, a ruler as the projectile moves along the screen so that we have an idea of how far high the projectile goes, how far to the left or right the projectile goes. And so now we're in a good spot to start testing some of the behavior of projectile motion. And so for doing that, what you typically do is you vary the initial speed and the initial angle that the projectile is launched at. And so what if, if this were my, you know, my intro physics class and I were teaching projectile motion, I would have them, for example, keep the speed the same and play around with this angle. So for example, I would have them say, start with an angle of 75 and run the code and we would watch the animation together. We would watch it. Uh, we'd watch the projectile fly up very, very high. I think I'm gonna decrease that speed a little bit. Um, and basically what we would do is we would turn this into a little experiment where we would figure out um, you know, how far the projectile travels based on the launch angle. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and about a half uh, units along the X direction. That is a lot to count. So we're gonna decrease this projectile speed. Let's make that maybe three, so a little bit less than half. But basically what we would do is we would count those blocks along the ruler to get an idea of how the um, of how that uh, how that range varied with the launch angle. Here we've got one, two, three, four and a half. And so what I would do is I would tell them, okay, 75 is a pretty steep angle. What if you were to do it at a at a shallower angle? So let's say we went with 60. <clears throat> Excuse me. And of course, there you get a little bit longer because you're not putting so much of the momentum in the vertical direction. Here you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, almost eight full bars in the horizontal direction. And I would tell the students, so oh, that's cool. So lower means farther, right? And they would say, yeah, probably. And so they would try out 50 degrees, which gets you a little bit farther, gets you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight almost nine full, so we gained a full bar there. And so I'd say, okay, keep going, keep going shallower. So they would try out 40. And launching at 40 gets you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, almost nine. And they would sit there, scratch their heads, and realize that they forgot to write down their answer from last time, but they're pretty sure, if you rewind the video back, that we got nine uh, uh, bars last time with four, with 50, and we get the same amount with 40. And so then they say, well, let's try going shallower. Let's try going with 30 degrees. And what you find out, it, of course, is that you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost eight, you get less distance because you're not allowing it to travel for as long because it's not going as far up. And so this is an interesting problem in projectile motion. It's an interesting one to pose students with, you know, in an intro physics class because you've got this trade-off between going Hot, between having a high vertical velocity and having a high horizontal velocity. You need a high vertical velocity in order to have time to travel, but you need a high horizontal velocity in order to actually make it some distance within that, uh, within that amount of time. And of course they play around with it and or you, you do the derivation. What you find out is that 45 degrees is the sweet spot because that's where you've got equal speed in the, in the vertical direction and in the horizontal direction. And that gets you your maximum at right at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bars. You're not going to get any farther than that. But that takes a lot of trial and error, and it takes, and, and it's kind of hard to visualize because you're turning this nice, beautiful animation into a single number on a page or into, you know, a pair of numbers on a page. And so it'd be nice to be able to visualize all of these within a single animation. So that's what we're going to do today, is you're going to add in a loop over the angle. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take our initial conditions uh, down here to where we're setting up everything for the projectile. So that way we'll have sort of everything having to do with the display up above and all the projectile information down here. So we'll say projectile information here. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to keep that speed constant, but we're going to vary the angle. So we're going to, let's see, we've already created the projectile up here. I think I want to move that down as well because I want there to be a fresh projectile every time so that way we're not having to worry about um, the make trail getting dragged back over. So we're going to create the projectile down here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a loop for the angle. So we're going to say loop over angle because <clears throat> we should call the initial angle because technically the velocity vector angle changes. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll say angle. I don't want to start out at zero because that's not going to get us anywhere. But what we can do, let's see, if I do, uh, if I do increments of 10, then that'll get us nine trajectories. I think that ought to be fine, except that won't capture 45. Oh, I know. Let's start at an angle of five and have a delta angle of 10. So that way we'll go 5, 15, 25, 35, 45, and we'll hit that sweet spot at 45. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up a loop for the angle. So for angle less than or equal to max angle, and I suppose I need to set up max angle. Um, let's see. So that's going to be, uh, let's go ahead and set that to 90. It's not going to reach 90, obviously, because we're going in increments of 10 starting at 5. But that means it will stop at 85. It'll, it'll, it will not go up to 95. Um, let's see, so we've got for angle less than or equal to max angle. So what I need to do is I need to take everything else that I've got and tab it over one. Uh, did I hit the right button? I did hit the right button. Hooray. Um, that was control right, uh, right square bracket um, right here. We'll let you indent a region by one unit, which is great. And then, of course, I don't want an infinite loop. I want this thing to continue along. And so we are going to need to go back in one more. There we go. Now we need to increment the angle by delta angle. Angle plus equals delta angle, right? Yes, that's what I call it here. And now, of course, what I need to do is I need to have this 45 replaced by angle. So this is the angle in this is the launch angle in degrees angle measured in degrees <clears throat> and so here we're taking the uh, I guess I should be consistent and call that initial angle otherwise somebody will be looking over my code and saying what's the difference between initial angle and a launch angle um, and after a day come to realize they're the same thing because I treat them the same way um, so we've got our angle now in here so that value this is the value that's going to change this is the only thing that's changing is the initial angle um, we, of course, create our sphere at the same launch point every time, and we're converting it into radians from degrees here. So, And then, of course, we've got our while loop here. This is going to stop nicely for us uh, when our projectile hits the ground. Now, we've so we had a few simulations run already. Um, we saw how quickly they run. Let's double the simulation speed just so that we're not sitting here watching you know, a whole bunch of these all day. So we're going from 5 to 85. Let's see what kind of difference we get. And of course, I'm missing something. What am I? Oh, uh, I think that needs. Is that what I'm missing? Yes, I'm missing parentheses around that. Excuse me. Still an in invalid syntax. Oh, oh, oops. This needs to be while, not for. Excuse me. There we go. Oh, and of course, uh, name projectile not defined. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, okay, so I'm going to need to update uh, my box initialization here. Um, let me cut here to clean that up, and then I'll meet you back once I've got my mess taken care of. Okay, so I have fixed the issue there. What I've done is I've defined a position vector launch underscore pause is going to be our starting point. In fact, I can change that in here as well, so that all I have to do at the very top of the code is oops, is specify where the launch position is. So this is the uh, initial position of uh, projectile. And in fact, I could even make that a loop to loop over this thing. That would be pretty cool. Um, and so what we've got here is we've got the sphere as uh, starting at launch position. So I just have to set that once. Um, and I went ahead and ran the code while I was off camera um, and figured out 
a rate of 200 was a little bit quick for the eyes, so we're going to make that 150. Okay, so what we've got here is we're starting out at 5 degrees. 5, uh, 15, 25, not, uh, not doing a whole lot of good for us there, not getting very far. But as we get closer to 45, like we saw before, we get farther. Once we pass 45, we start uh, retracting back our range. So it's kind of cool how they line up as you go back this way. Uh, basically what this shows you is that if you don't launch far enough, if you don't launch enough in the vertical direction, you don't have enough time to travel. But if you launch too far in the vertical direction, you've got plenty of time to travel, but you don't, you're not moving fast enough in the horizontal direction. So this is a nice way to get these sort of figures that you see in your introductory physics textbook to show you that this launch angle of 45 degrees is the optimal uh, condition. Um, I think that screen is clear enough. We could change delta angle to five and uh, get to view all, get, get to view a greater variety of them. It's always nice to get prettier graphs. So these are now incrementing by five. So we've got five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. You notice that they're starting to scrunch up close to each other here. So here we've got um, a farther distance than we do between each of these. So the, the amount you gain for a five degree increment decreases every time. And then of course now we're starting to work our way backwards. So we've gone 45, 50, 55, 60, 65. Here's our 70, 70 degree. Here we got 75 degrees. Our next is going to be 80 degrees. And you notice it is taking longer for them to travel now because they're, they're basically traveling up and then down. Here's 85 and our last one's going to be 90 which has no horizontal component. And so it just launches up and comes straight back down. Um, and you notice it doesn't even gain that much height over this one. So this kind of gives you an idea of sort of the, you know, the relationship between sine and cosine, um, as it were, uh, just because, you know, it's not this linear thing. Um, let's play around now with the launching speed. Uh, let's, uh, let's increase that to four. Uh, let's maybe make our, 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 our rulers do a little bit of work here. Yeah, we're definitely getting farther this time. Now, of course, this time we've just changed the speed, but 45 is still going to be the launch angle because if you do the proof, um, the maximum of 45 is independent of the launch speed. And of course, obviously, the more we make the launch speed, the farther out these things are going to go. I think that makes that one 40. Five. Yep, so that was 45 right there, right? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Yeah, so 45 is your maximum regardless of the launch speed. Now, of course, this is assuming that the only force we have acting is the gravitational force. If we were to add it, which I'd like to do next time, then several things will happen. One, these, uh, these curves will become asymmetric because the thing will be losing energy as it goes forward. So you'll have a sharper angle up front. Uh, or excuse me, uh, you'll you'll have a sorry you'll have you'll have a, a broader concavity up front and then a sharper drop down um, on the on the landing side of it, and so that's going to affect what the maximum is. So this code is going to be useful uh, to us again uh, when we add in the drag force, when we add in lift force, when we add in uh, uh, you know a crosswind and things like that um, to be able to help us uh, uh, figure out how this. Uh, optimal launch angle gets modified when we add in those forces. So that is what we will start with next time. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.